Evil King, Make sure your microphones are within your listening. I just speak the way you know me, do. Okay. I'll, I'll find you. You don't need a handphone. Oh, okay. Just for sure. <laughs> today. <laughs> no, like today no, no, she's not going to take live calls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you would definitely get one too. Gotcha. If you like the look of it, though, kind of cool. One of my guests had had the headset on, and he's like, "Yeah, you don't need it." And he's like, "No, I do need it for the look. Right. <laughs> I'm on the radio. Saying, it saying, goes with the look." <laughs> Put some things on there. Okay, Here we go, y'all. All right. Hey, you guys! If y'all are watching, give us say hi in the comments. Let Chris and Marcus know y'all are in the place. Up. Let's see. Let me make sure. Facebook family, what's going on? Five, two, let's go. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday. You are listening to 97.5 FM KDEE. I am Agent Key and we are selling Sacramento. If you have been following the show on Facebook or YouTube, if you've been following the news, if you've been following reparations in California, it's a real thing, y'all. Um, probably the last five years, I've had my ear a little bit closer to the ground. But one of my guests today has had not only his ear to the ground, he has been digging the ground, <laughs> creating the ground, tilling the ground. <laughs> And I'm sure he is just as happy as a beetle bug <laughs> right now <laughs> because California reparations are so close. You can just taste it. Yep. You can feel it. It's, yep. it's not unimaginable anymore. Right. I remember about five years ago when I started paying attention to them, there were still a lot of people, ah, that ain't, never, that ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. That ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Chris Lodgson, ladies and gentlemen, yes. he is here. <laughs> CJEC's Chris Lodgson, Coalition for a Just and Equitable California. California, it's a California community based organization united for reparations and reparative justice. Yes. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, I have been working with CJEC, the Coalition for a Just and Equitable California, for over a year now, but we actually were just a group of regular black folks who have been working for reparations for years, even right. before the last year or so. So it's been several years right. that we've been working for reparations. Here Give us an idea, because I know yeah. there have been name changes. There have been, there have yeah. been different sects out yeah, there, of course, of course. you know, splits and people yeah. trying to get it together to get yeah. to where we are today. Yeah. So how long would you estimate? Wow. And there's a reason I'm asking this question. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say since about late 2018, early 2019, that's when we first started getting closer to what the state was doing here for, for reparations. And then just regular black folks, like I said, found each other mostly online and then sometimes offline and started saying we was going to do something to make California be the first state in the nation to do reparations for black folks who descend from U.S. slavery. Now, do you think that it was, you mentioned the internet brought a lot of you together. Yeah. Do you think that if the internet were not invented, mm. would we be been, where we are today? No, it would have been much harder, mm -hmm. much harder. It would have taken much longer and we wouldn't be where we are when we are. Mm -hmm. right, and not right just now. the internet, but social media, because y'all made those media. connections. Yes, absolutely by the internet, specifically social mm -hmm. media, and I'm talking Twitter, mm -hmm. YouTube, specifically 
also Instagram, Facebook, and now TikTok also. Yeah, it would have taken much longer and we would not be where we are, which is, and I tell this to, to folks all the time and my team members who are who are listening, they've heard me say this many, many times, we're closer today than we've been to reparations since the end of the Civil War. Wow. And and I bring that up and I say I, I wanted you to talk about the time frame yeah. for some specific reasons. Because yeah. of how long it's taken and because of the invention of technology, yeah. how important technology is Critical. as it pertains to social justice. Critical. It's, it's, been, it's been a tremendous organizing tool. It's been a tremendous communications tool. It's been a tremendous mobilization tool. It, it has really transformed the way we organize, the way we mobilize, the way we fight for, you say social justice, I say social justice, I also say reparative justice, and I say reparations. Right, and so with that, so we're talking about the tools and, and how the different gifts and talents and skills yeah. come together to get us to this point. Right, right. There's another skill that has us here today as well. And that is the messenger, the messenger. So you create the message, then we need somebody to take the message, break it down into bite-sized pieces and distribute it out to the rest of the world. And so ladies and gentlemen, my second guest today, Mr. Marcus D. Smith from the Sacramento Bees Equity Lab. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for having me, Keisha. It's great to be back. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm always honored because Marcus claims me as the first public voice, the first person with a platform, whether it's radio or wherever, that had him on my show first as he came back into and stepping into his journalism role here in Sacramento. That's right. My first professional career interview as a journalist. Wow was right here, right here on wow. Selling Sacramento, <laughs> ladies and gents. And so Marcus has taken, it's, let me let me give you guys a little backdrop here. The uh, task force, yeah. give us the background on the task force. Sure. Yeah, so California created a first in the nation reparations commission or task force with a law in 2020. The law was written and championed by now Secretary of State Sir Shirley, Shirley, Shirley G. Weber, mm -hmm. then assembly member from San Diego, Shirley Weber. And Dr. Weber was the, the champion of the bill that the governor signed in 2020, creating a nine member commission that has to do three things generally, has to first study, collect evidence and document the case for reparations in California. Then it has to figure out ways to educate the California public. And then third, it has to actually create a reparations plan. The commission has to hold by law 10 public meetings, and it has added to that an additional 12, what we call community listening sessions, one of which we're holding in Los Angeles in about two or three days on June 18th and June 19th in Lamert Park. So if you're listening all the way from LA, be there. Yes. And so when you say that's that's falling right in line with the Juneteenth celebration, yep, the right. Juneteenth week, weekend, right. it couldn't be better timing. You, you can't talk about Juneteenth without talking about reparations. And so right. this this committee, this task force has produced this final report. Yep. And this first report, the first, first, report, report, right, first yes. report. Yes. Yes. And so what yep. this first report looks like is about how many pages? It's about 500 pages long, 490 something pages long. And 492. It, 492. <laughs> thank you. See, he knows. Here, right? 492 pages long. It is thick. It is full of what we've learned over the past year of hearings from the commission's first year. And, and one thing I, I, I would add is that the commission has two years to do all of its work, to do those three things. And it started meeting in 2021. So we're at the halfway point now in 2022. It will release its final report in 2023. This is the first or interim or early mm -hmm. report of the First in the Nation Reparations Commission. And this report, again, summarizes all that the commission has learned over the first year of hearings from testimony, from experts, from the from the public, from from research. I mean, it is it is really a documentation of the harms and atrocities that Black folks who descend from U.S. slavery in this country have underwent and also overcame. Mm -hmm. And there, I know we're going to go more into the report. One last thing to say about the report, though, this is the most important report, the biggest report, the most significant report for Black folks in this country since the 1960s. What we call the Kerner Commission report, which I think was done in 1968. There's the Kerner 
commission report, and then there's this. And with that, when you pointed out how many pages it was, because of how uh, in depth it is, most lay people, general people, folks like me, are not going to take the time to read right. everything in that report. But right. it's important that we know. It would be nice if we actually did take the time, not only nice, it would be beneficial to take the time to read the report, to have the education. In the interim, we have an article with from the Sacramento Bee written by this man right <laughs> here who took the time to go through the report and he has pulled out five key findings from that report. Do you want to talk about the report a bit from yeah, your perspective? I want, I want to talk about it from my perspective, but what I really want to lead with is something that I can't stress enough. And that's really just exactly what you just said. Take You, you really ought to take the time to go through it all. It's something that I've told friends, family, and that there's no way when you're talking about reparations, when you're talking about the original sins of this country, there's no way we can't there's no way anybody, not even myself, can really fully articulate that in about a thousand, twelve hundred words. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's something right. that you really have to dissect thoroughly, thick and thick and thin, because there's so much of it. And I and I tried. There's five important takeaways. Yes. And but there's so much more th in there. There's so much more. That's equally as important. Right. It's all important because it all plays a hand in this system whether it's this capital capitalist system whether it's this um political system mm -hmm. whether it's um the environmental system right you know there's so many the education system right. there's so many housing college and everything yeah it's so many things like when and that's why i love that report and that's why i really really want everyone to go ahead and take a look at that report i'm a full believer that they should teach this report in school, in school. i was just <laughs> i was thinking that I, I, i'm thinking textbook, this yeah. should be a class this yep. should be a part of the history books there should be a class all by itself yep. because the foundation of america was built on slavery right. we can't deny that but this report just it details yeah how we got from there to here, why things look the way they do, yeah. and how we go back and repair those things. Yeah, well, one a, a couple a couple of things. One, you're absolutely right, Marcus. This needs to be in every school. Every this needs to be a textbook. There, there needs to be a whole class just on this report. That's the first thing. That's absolutely right. I'm, I'm so glad you said that. And the other thing I want to say is, so part of what our our team does at CJEC, the Coalition for Just and Equitable California, part of what our role is is to actually make sure that people understand what's in this re report. We right. are one of the six community anchor organizations that the Reparations Commission actually selected to do community outreach. And so part of what we're doing. I want to yeah. add to what you're saying there. So to his point, ladies and gentlemen, I got a, a great view watching the CJEC and I am I am part of it but not at, i'm not doing all the you work are, i do exactly what y'all see here i make sure that you know the information gets out but i'm watching y'all work yeah. together and not only are they working to help bring this to fruition but the committee they're communicating with the committee they're yep. making sure the committee is hearing the voice of the public because That's, of your organization 100 that is one of our key roles we do two general things when we do community outreach and, and then we also do advocacy and that is exactly what we're doing, particularly around this first report. We are right now going through the report chapter by chapter. We have a team of volunteers. Each volunteer has a certain number of chapters. They're reading, they're, they're taking notes, then they're reporting those notes back. What I'm doing is I'm collecting those notes and then we're working to create graphics, create PSAs, create short bite-sized, what we call snackable pieces pieces of content yeah. that people can use to digest what's in this long report yeah. in an easy way. And also every Monday on Twitter, I'm reading live each chapter of the of the first nice. animation re report. So if you wow. want to hear the report read to you, you can join me on Twitter. That's Follow a us at, yeah, great yeah, suggestion. Yeah, at, at CJEC of, official. And you can actually listen to the report read to you chapter by chapter every single week. It's usually every Monday at 7 p.m. Now, if they go to CJEC official, are there recordings of the previous reading so that they these, can go back and listen? These are absolutely also recorded okay. also. And one of, one, of, one of the ideas that we have is what we like to do is when we're done with all 13 chapters 
and we've read all 13 chapters. They're all recorded. And this is on Twitter, Twitter spaces, by the way. Okay. So then what we want to do is actually cut out the recordings and then put the recordings together and then just put it out and maybe like an audio file yeah. or, like, or like an audio book. Where you can download yeah. it from Audible or something. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. We need to take a break. I, yeah, his, I knew his face was going <laughs> to take a break. I'm going to take the break. And when we come back, we're going to dive into Marcus's five key findings. And then we're going to talk about the Freedmen's Bureau. Yeah. And I, yes, we're going to talk about it. You're listening to 97.5 FM KDEE. I'm Agent Key, and we'll be right back. Okay. Miss Sharita, hello there. Hey, you guys, if y'all are out there watching, just type something in the chat. Say hello. Let the gentleman know that y'all are out there watching. Oh, no, we're good, bro. You're good. You're good. Trust me. Not did it because No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Great segment. Yeah, I am dope. excited about yeah. this, and the time is already going by so fast, and that's I know, why I didn't take right the point. break. Uh, uh, we're at one fourteen. You can't talk about it. In, in Both of y'all talk hour. fast, yeah, so time, thank goodness yeah, because yeah, we're, we're gonna getting get a lot in <laughs> at, in just fourteen minutes. Look, like, I know how I know how it is being on, on this side, so it's like you got to say so much, yeah. but so little at the same time. There, home inspection yeah. 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 You know, TV, you gotta be locked in the people in the movie. Radio, I think you, you press ahead, and home like, inspection were there at 10 30. Period, yeah, should have you gotta, been you gotta hold them too, you know, like and Craig. You know, radio is actually just like you know, really succinct journalism, you know, every right. like in journalism, every every word, every line. You want people to think it was the same thing in radio. Right, right. Every word that you say, you want people to latch on to every single word. Right. Because if you don't, man, they will be gone. Yeah. And like, every time you'll say, we come on, that's when they'll turn the station. <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm doing the Twitter Spaces thing. And that is, I just started doing spaces like. What is Twitter Spaces? When you said that, I, I've seen that before, but I don't know so how it acts. It's. So you go on, you go on Twitter, and it is you're just listening to people talk, um, similar to how Clubhouse does, mm -hmm. but it's on Twitter. So, so is there a like a Twitter Spaces link that you click on to go into Twitter so Spaces? Like, yeah. yeah. So kind of like everybody you follow, like whoever is hosting one, you'll see like a little purple kind oh. of right. microphone or whatever that comes up on the top of your screen, mm -hmm. and you just click, and you're automatically in. Yeah. And then question. you're listening, oh. and then and then they can bring you up to the stage. To, to what? Follow so it yeah. acts just like Clubhouse. Yep. yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how you guys are doing the audio yep. for nice. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we're so we have about an hour or so of reading. And it and records. Then we, then like, yep, it, it records and then we have about an hour or so of just talking about what, what we read. Now that's different from um Clubhouse. Clubhouse didn't record, did it? Uh I don't know if you can record Clubhouse. I'm not sure. I wasn't big on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Um I do have an account. But I wasn't I been either. On I know. I was I've been on like twice, maybe I went into some of those rooms in Clubhouse and stuff and you don't have nothing nice to say it was yeah right but um but yeah so i never really got into it yeah i think it's twitter's like way of competing with clubhouse they said okay y'all y'all doing audio we're gonna do audio but on twitter mm -hmm. with our bigger following yeah know, uh, or with our, our, our bigger platform yeah it sounds better I yeah think. check it out yeah, yeah. For sure, especially to sit and hear you just talk about the chapters yeah, and read. That's you know, very I, yeah. I, 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 I especially you said it's like on a, a Sunday. Uh, Monday, Mondays at seven p.m. Mondays at seven. Okay. Three. Go. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. You're listening to ninety-seven five FM KDEE, and we are talking about California reparations. The almost five hundred plus page. Can I say that <laughs> report? that's out and before we went on break we were talking about the importance really of you taking the time to read the report we we talked about um some different options that you have um you can go to cjec official on twitter, on twitter. Yep. and listen to chris read chapter by chapter there are past readings go there and listen chapter by chapter if reading is not your thing maybe there's someone who's visually impaired have someone guide you to CJEC official on Twitter so that you can go and hear the report. Both of the gentlemen were stressing, Marcus and Chris, Marcus Smith from Sacramento Bee's Equity Lab is here with us as well. And they're both stressing the importance of seeing that report for yourself and knowing the information in there. 
I can remember. As a matter of fact, I was in Allensworth mm. this past Saturday, and they I, I, we wow. were in the the church that the community had built. Allensworth is it Allensworth or Allenstown? Allensworth. It Allensworth. is Allensworth, yes, Allensworth. and um, it's a it's a black built town, black built community by Colonel Allen Allensworth. And there was a church. There is a church there. In the church, as you're, you can go through and tour these different places. It's the original church. They've restored everything. And so you're seeing from the early 1900s how this commun community was built. And you're just feeling the history and how they did life. Wow. They're playing, they play this video that just repeats itself. And it's about an hour long. But it talks about their life, how it came to be, how how he was, who he was as a young boy. And in the video, it has a, a narrative of his mother um, seeing him for the last time because he's being sent away because he got caught reading. Wow. And so this is during mm. slave slavery mm. because he got caught. And so she asked him, Alan, you know how to read? And he says some and she hands him a book and says, read this. Mm. And he starts reading. And I want to say it was a scripture out of the Bible. So she, I, she, I believe she handed him the Bible. So wow. she gave him some money and she told him, you take this money because the guy that was there to help smuggle him out mm. brought him to her to say, hey, we got to get your boy out of here. Yeah. And so she, of course, was crying and upset, but she knew what had to be done because why? Once you got your education, once you knew how to read, yeah. you were a threat mm. yeah. to the slave master. If, 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 if I can say one thing that I want to definitely want to hear my, my brother Marcus's five key takeaways. One thing that you just said that comes out in the report and people who are reading the report or are going to listen to me read the report to them should know and should expect is that the report is structured in a way where Usually each chapter talks about how the United States government is guilty. And then also it has a California focus too. So each chapter also has a, a part where it talks about California's specific in, involvement. And one thing that comes out clearly, and this is something that people need to know, is that there was slavery in this state of California. There were thousands of Africans enslaved in this state of California. California. Why is that important? Why do you emphasize it that? Is, it is very important because we often hear about California as coming into the, into the union as a free state, a free state. That is not true. Yeah. There were enslaved Africans who later became Americans in this state of California. Yeah. There are people that you and I both know who are descendants of people who were brought to the state of California enslaved, worked the gold mines enslaved. And I think you just talked about uh, you know, Colonel, Colonel Allen. Allen, Allen. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an important point to remember and to learn. And that's not what we're taught. Right. That's right. Not what and we're that's taught. why it's important right. that you say that, that you emphasize that because it's not what we're taught and the report reveals right. the truth. And so to both of your point, before we went on break, it's really important, ladies and gentlemen, that you try to take the time to touch that report yourself. Yeah. Put your own personal eyeballs on that report. Yeah. You, you know, talked about you know, that it should be really in the like school. That's why I really like the report. It's exactly like my brother Chris said, you know, it starts off with the United States component. And I think it's kind of well known that there is that there is slavery and enslavement in the United States. But there is this wide misconception among many Californians who don't look like us, who believe that this state did not whatsoever allow slavery mm -hmm. when in fact it did. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, a couple of years after it became this quote unquote free state, they enacted fugitive slave laws right. just for anyone who came to the state with their quote unquote property at that time. Yeah. Or for anyone who was already there living and tried to claim themselves as a free man because this state is quote unquote now free right so anyone at that time who tried to run away or or find a better life they were captured under this fugitive slave law mm -hmm. and either sent to the southern state sent with mm -hmm. or sent back to wherever their 
there I, I don't want to use the term master but well, enslavers thank you enslaver mm-hmm. thank you yeah. wherever they're in wherever their enslaver was and so I'm gonna really get to my five takeaways because one of the first ones on there is really the criminal justice disparities mm-hmm. with that just think about 1852 yeah and the psycholo- and the psychological things that does to anyone who's under their patrol force i i gotta say before you start with your article i love what i loved about your article was how you so eloquently because oftentimes when we talk about the past and slavery we get angry and we have to stop getting angry about it and just be factual and i love how eloquently factual you were in your report so i just wanted to preface that with that well, trust me. It, 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 I know you, know, you got angry. You need a few drafts, right? <laughs> you had to take you type something. Readers. You're like, "Ooh, that's a little too angry." You know? I'm a reporter. I'm not. I'm not an opinion editor. I'm not an opinion writer, right? You did a writer, fine right? job. <laughs> so, you did a fine job. Well, thank you. But you know, it it goes to to what I'm saying about this systemic issue that goes way back to before all of us in this room were even thought of, right? right? And that's the importance of teaching this. This is the importance of knowing about this and knowing about reparations because this happened, there's documentation of it. So now what are we going to do? Before I get into the five takeaways, there's one thing that I, that I really want to stress enough. Because we talk about how there's the United States component then there's the California component in the report. But there's also the recommendations and what that looks like. And yeah. I love that about the report because yeah. too many often times in historical context, we talk about an issue, complain about an issue, but don't provide any solution. Right. Absolutely. What this report does, it provides solution, concrete solution, what we want, how to obtain that, and how to how to go about that. There are six pages that you can go yeah. to the uh, attorney general's page, and you can print out the report. You can print out the findings, and you can print out the six-page recommendation list. And I, and I say one, 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 one thing too, and this is important context for the audience to know because it it brings in where we are in the process of creating the first in the nation actual reparations plan. Yeah, California will be the state, the first state to do an actual reparations plan in the law that created the first in the nation commission. The law said that the commission had to do two reports. You're looking at the first one. We're talking about the first one. And the second report, which is what we're going to spend the next year actually creating ourselves, if you liked the first report and if you like the recommendations in the first report, wait till you see the next one because the next one will be historic. There will be nothing comparable to it. The next report, the final report, will have an actual reparations plan in it. It will take many of the key recommendations. It will, it will take many of the findings and in, include them, but it will have an actual reparations plan. That will be groundbreaking. There will have been nothing like that. And that will happen in, in our, months. Yep. 2023, in July 1st. So in all my sports fans out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All my sports fans out yeah. there, you know, you're going to be looking at uh, my NBA fans, especially, you're going to be looking at next year's free agency in right 2023. <laughs> We're going to be looking at this this uh, reparation report package. being finally submitted. So, yes. <laughs> which of the two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our lifetime, yeah. it's it's historic. It is yeah. unprecedented. Like you said, California is ground. We are setting the tone for the rest of the nation. Yeah. Talk about your key findings. You were beginning with slavery, and you were headed toward the prison system. Go on and lay that out. I mean, well, I mean, just picking back up from, you know, 1852 when they enacted these fugitive slave laws to and 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 let's be real. When you take yourself back, how how can you tell if someone is, quote unquote, enslaved or not? Right. It's it's exactly what we see today. Why are black men and women pulled over I love how at more t- more at, at a higher rate than our brothers and sisters of other backgrounds and ethnicities. The color of your skin. You can't tell, you see a it's black person test. in slavery. Yeah. It's, it's, it, and it's that, and that goes way back to those times in 1852, because if you're walking along some 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 gold mine, right? Or the and, county road. Or the county road, or going into a barbershop that, that a patrol just happens to be in. Mm-hmm. And they, and they just have, and they just, they had a bad day that day, or in that time, it's always a bad day when they see us. Mm-hmm. So there's 
they call everybody up saying this guy's enslaved yeah. we need to catch him mm -hmm. and that and that systemic happens to today's day in 2022 where we see black men leading rates and um, incarceration numbers and so and we call it it's racial profiling but you're saying that it got its basis from back in those days when there were people that were officially appointed to recapture slaves based on the eye test and knowing that it's not really a test it's just a matter of whether you felt like going after that person that day i mean it's the same thing that we've seen historically in, in previous decades when we talk about you know the 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 war on drugs, the war on crime, and then that really just um, pushed uh, into mass incarceration. As uh, we talk about your key findings, let's talk about what did you, do you have, do you want to talk about the solutions to attach? Because I don't want to leave the audience, the listening audience angry. Yeah, no. I want us to. No, I we're, gonna, we're to definitely going to get to the solutions. Let, yeah. let, me, let me just say, let me just uh, finish that point. Thank sure, you. yeah about the solutions and this is why not only did i find this very interesting why i i, I um strongly believe that they need to teach this in not only california schools but all schools across the nation mm -hmm. there's solutions there are recommendations in place how about and, this how about you lay it out and then i'll i'll say the solution because i got it right here i got mm -hmm. you okay before i before we do that let me say this it's not money Okay. Right. There's, there's this whole misconception whether you know you watched the Dave Chappelle skit uh, from the Dave Chappelle show years ago, whether you've been, whether this conversation has been going on for decades. It's not money that that um, the task force is asking for. It's policies. It's legislation. It's in the form of grants, loans, zero percent APR when you go to take out this loan and that loan. It's things that we've been ostracized from in the past and writing that wrong so there's this huge huge misconception about oh it's money i mean for me personally i don't want to see us get money because we saw with the pandemic and these little stimulus checks even though it was just fourteen hundred dollars right well some people, <laughs> some some people, some people did something with it well, some people did yeah, something with well, it yeah, and we, some people yeah. didn't chris, do anything chris is saying he wants his yeah, check, and, and <laughs> he want the check. Said, no, we have to get money i know a lot of time. people want that we check. Have to, we have to get money and money money will be a big part of what we do get ultimately the commission by law in the law that created, created the commission has to consider what we call the five different forms of reparations. And they are their compensation, restitution, rehabilitation, satisfaction, and then guarantees of non-repetition. And the primary form of, of reparations is compensation. And the compensation part is critical is, is crucial and i do expect that when we see the plan mm -hmm. in 2023 which is right in, in july of 2023 when we see that plan we will see a big part of what the commission says we do is actually directly compensate those of us who are descendants of u.s slavery and one other thing is in the times that we're talking about in the late eight in middle 1800s you know late eight, 18 1800s it was very easy to identify someone who was a formerly enslaved person or a free a free black person because at that time there was almost no voluntary immigration to this country i mean you could you know you it just it just makes sense right why would a country that doesn't like black people allow black people to voluntarily come to this country right most as as a matter of fact over 90 plus 95 98 99 percent of the people who look like us in this country at that time came here not by choice came here force. in in force right by 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 force so it it's it was much easier back then now our population is different today because after the 1960s we have very different types of immigration policies here and the, the commission did decide in march and this is just the, the last point the the commission did decide in march that those of us who are descendants of U.S. slavery in this country will be eligible, or will be those who are eligible for this for this first in the nation California rep reparation. And a big part of that, if you ask me, and if you ask a lot of us, has to be money. Money has to be money. But yeah. and to that point, I want to add the um, so that we can get to the other four points. I just want to yeah. add the solutions to the police part. So the committee has in their recommendations for future deliberation regarding that they call they have it under a category of racial terror mm -hmm. make it easy to hold law enforcement officers including correctional officers and their employing agencies accountable for unlawful harassment 
uh, and violence, including a provision overruling the extra textual, extra textual specific intent requirement that California courts have read into the Bain Act, mm -hmm. a provision eliminating state law immunities that shield officer misconduct, mm -hmm. and explicitly rejecting protections uh, analogous to qualified immunity under federal law yeah. and a provision for additional special damages when unlawful conduct is shown to be racially motivated. And then there are two more points that are smaller than that one. Create forms of expression, acknowledgement, and remembrance of the trauma of state-sanctioned white supremacist terror, possibly including memorials and funding, funding a long-term truth and reconciliation commis commission and then the third point, estimate the value of black owned businesses and property in California stolen or destroyed through acts of racial terror. Then, Are you listening, mm -hmm. Jonathan? <laughs> Distribute that amount back to black Californians and make housing grants, zero interest business and housing loans and grants available to black California. Beautiful. One, that, one, that one solution to that too, and because this is, and this is on the on the on the criminal justice piece of this, you you're absolutely right. And you mentioned the you know how we you know the the, the slave catchers, the slave pat patrols. One thing that we do want to mention that's in the report as a solution is for the state of California to officially actually end the slavery and involuntary servitude exception in the state constitution right now. Right now, you can be enslaved in the state of California today if it's, you are punished for a crime. And right now there's a bill in the state legis legislature right now, the state Senate called ACA3. I gave testimony on ACA3 just about a week ago with a good brother of mine, Samuel Nathaniel Brown, brother did 24 years in prison, just been home about 175, 180 days and was being forced to work in his cell and in his cell wrote the language that is now ACA3 and the and the reparations commission heard testimony from Samuel and then put his recommendation in that first is that Jamila's husband? That, yes, yes, yes it is. <laughs> Big shout out to Jamila Land, yes. Samuel Brown. Yes. Yeah. Jamila Land. She's another one that is just, you know, so so that's why it's important for you to go and read this with your own eyeballs yeah. because under even though we talked a little bit about uh, the recommendations under the category of racial terror, just as Chris was saying, there are other areas, there are other categories of recommendations that cross over into all of these different issues that we have had and that we're trying to resolve. You know, before before I get into the next thing, which is, you know, the political disenfranchisement, mm -hmm. which, which was it, um, 1854, it was, they created um, voting laws that made it so black people and people of color could not vote or testify against any white person. Mm -hmm. So that's important because this, it wasn't just like, you know, black and African Americans were just getting caught and nobody was there to, to help them or, or save them. No, this is why I'm an advocate for always being your brother or your sister's keeper to in today's day and age. Cause that's exactly what they were doing back then. Mm -hmm. There were, there were organizations, community groups that would, really that really be watching policing their own communities mm -hmm. ensuring that their own brother their own sister mother cousin whomever right. did not get caught disenfranchised uh, disenfranchised mm -hmm. and caught back into slavery mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so i i say that because when that would happen and we would be accused of a crime or being uh enslaved we could not testify against that mm -hmm. in today's day and age when we can when we have community groups that can fight on behalf of our brothers and sisters that when we can get into these political spaces that's something that i'm a big i'm a big pusher on yeah, but yeah. there's a lot more that talks about that how we can get more people into that so if you, if you can tell us the recommendations yeah, so for i'll tell you the political disenfranchisement so the recommendations right. for the political disenfranchisement create forms of acknowledgement and apology for acts of political disenfranchisement pass legislation that is in alignment of objectives stated in ab 2576 and establish separate funding for broke voter education and outreach to provide state funding and charge the Secretary of State with making grants to county registers for programs that integrate voter registration and pre-registration with civic education for programs that increase voter registration within the county's underrepresented communities and high school students. 
consider legislation to prevent dilution of the black vote through redistricting. Mm -hmm. That happens so often right mm -hmm. under our noses as we sleep and we don't even realize we, it. We, we just went through a, a, a redistricting period right. last year. This How many year? people yeah. are aware that that happened? Right. Right. right? That's how it happens. Require legislative policy committees to conduct racial impact analysis of all proposed legislation and require the administration to include a comprehensive racial impact analysis for all budget proposals and proposed mm -hmm. regulations. And then allow individuals with felony convictions to serve on juries and prohibit judges and attorneys from excluding jurors for solely having a criminal record. Yeah. Brilliant. That, that is huge. That's, that's all brilliant. of that is. If, we, if you think about the number of people incarcerated and how many of the number, the percentage of number of folks incarcerated that are black because of the direct targeting of trying to 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 imprison the black male population. Yeah. Those yeah. are votes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and then you build a mindset after you when you attack a people like that for so long. Why do I care about voting? they don't care yeah. about me so now we have this whole community that has this this mindset where we 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 don't really care about the political landscape as our at previous generations yeah not not it's watering near. down it is the so one thing that you read that I, I want to highlight also in addition to what you just said is the racial impact analysis piece because a lot of times, all the time now, actually, we don't know what the, we know what the racial impact is going to be ourselves for laws that get passed and budgets that gets passed, by the way, that the California budget about to get passed like today or tomorrow. But so we know that, hey, there's no money in the budget for us. Hey, there's no, this law is bad for us. But the the state gets to pass these laws and pass these budgets without even having to think about that. And so what this commission is being, is recommending is that there be a racial impact analysis done before anything gets passed any any law that comes out you got to tell us what's going to be the impact on black people mm. what's going to be the impact before you pass it that's great right that that is a that is an important that's like point. our own sequel right 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 <laughs> love right. it Bleak yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. perfect okay so what's the next point that you highlighted I mean, well, well this is selling sacramento so i thought it would be obviously yeah. you know yeah, talk about talk housing. About housing, right? <laughs> i mean where do we start whether it's whether it's redlining whether it's the whole racial terror aspect and moving us out of you know affluent neighborhoods or neighborhoods that have a wide range of the tree canopy you know whether it's there are so many different components that you can really talk about with housing but i thought it was important just to um include housing into that takeaway because a lot of under individuals don't understand that we're renting and yeah. we're not buying as much if we're not we buying we're renters. not owning mm -hmm. you know and so when you don't own something that means you're answering to somebody else mm -hmm. and just when you look at the historical and also then another component to that what is when you look at just the historical quote unquote black neighborhoods I was actually just just driving down foreign, you know, on my way over here. And the vast difference coming off the five between Florin East and Florin West. Yep. There's something alarming about that. And I don't understand why a lot of people don't talk about that. The yeah. vast difference between the little cutoff section between South Sacramento and El Grove. Yeah. The difference between Land Park and Oak Park, the difference between um, a, a Del Paso Heights yep. and, and then a, a Natomas. Yep. When you, why aren't we talking about these these differences in housing communities when they're just right there, walking, biking distance, driving no more than two to five minutes? I think that yep. that's why this report is so important because it causes us for the for the person who reads it and reflects on it. It causes you to take a look at your your world right here and now and right here in California, why things are the way they are. We don't yeah. question because we're so conditioned. We think yeah. that that's how a thing is supposed to be and how things got to where they are were because of policies that were implemented, yeah. because of laws, because of things of, of that nature. And um, if we think about the time of slavery, if we go back, 
land was what was given to many slaves when they became freed. There were millions of acres of land held by black people back during slavery time. And now, if you think about white families or other ethnic ethnicities that held land, a lot of their land now have their families today, fast forward, very wealthy and very well off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. when you think about, when you look at black people today, where did all that land go? We yeah. came from somewhere and the, the land was there. It, it, it was, it was, it was stolen. It was, and you know, so it, it, you know, we can, we can go back to the original promise of 40 acres and a mule, right? By the way, I think there was one study that I saw that in 2013 housing, you know, land, you know, worth, you could, you could build 900 homes on 40 acres. Okay. So think about that. Each, each one of our families would have gotten 40 acres. Um, now that promise was started and then taken away. And then actually the enslavers got their land back and got paid for the loss of their quote property. Mm -hmm. Right. So that happened. Even after that, black folks still managed to build up millions of acres of land mm -hmm. up and up until, you know, the early 1900s. And then you have this wave of land theft. Bureau property, of land this, management. This, this destruction, mm -hmm. the hundred different Tulsa's mm -hmm. that, that happened. Mm -hmm. And and so we have now, I think, you know, less than a you know less than a le million acres less than, of less land. Less than a million Hell. acres of land. I think there's one one white family own one or two white families own more land than all black people come come combined. And yes. now hear this too. One in four white households can trace their property back to the Homestead Act. So right now, one in four of the white people that white families that we know can trace their current home back to land that their family got during the during the someone homestead watching act. Or someone when, listening. Right. When mm -hmm. the government was giving out land for free to white folks, all you had to do was show that you could even you know use use the land. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a government handout, what 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 we call white affirmative action. Mm -hmm. That right now, like I said, one in four white households have can trace their land back to what the government did back then. So we've had our land stolen. We've had our opportunity to create land stolen. And what I'm expecting in the final re report of the commission is that there is land resti restitution. Mm -hmm. That land I was taken is given back and opportunities to buy land and property are given or we're compensated for those types of stolen opportunities. And so there are two categories under the executive summary in their um, recommendations. Um, uh, there are a lot. I, I'm going to try to read them all, but it all relates <laughs> to housing, right? Identify and eliminate anti-Black housing discrimination policy practices. That is huge. People don't understand. And I, I can't expound on it. I, I'm going to just run through those that I can. But when I hit one where we got to expound on it, we got to expound on it. There are uh, reasons right now today why housing is so hard for Blacks yeah. with, with the credit uh, issues and down payment assistance issues. That stems from somewhere. Yeah. And so we can't just be a nation of people that say, oh, you got bad credit. That's your fault. Nope. Or, and you, got, you don't have enough money. Work harder. Make more money. Save more. Be a better steward there are some things that happened historically that put that person in that position historically. And so whether it's a mindset or whether it's family history, a lot of it, 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 it it's all combined. Can I say one, one Absolutely. thing on the credit part here, one thing that a lot of the young activists, the young grassroots reparations activists are fighting for as a part of what we'll see in the final plan are credit resets. Mm. So as a part of California rep reparations, reset all of our credit. That's mm -hmm. amazing. All right. Put it up. 750. I don't, I don't know what the number is. You, you may know better it's, than me. It's seven. seven Seven's the magic Everybody number. Everybody who's eligible, gets your credit seven. gets reset. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, that would be huge. So with that, and here, because I can hear people talking, I'll be like, ah, oh, but if you mismanage your money and if you're just not, 
But that's where the educational piece comes yeah. in. That's where when you say your organization, you're all working on little bite sized pieces yeah. to help make things uh, easier to understand. That's where locally the um, what do we call them? The CBOs, community based organizations. Yeah. That's where the financial literacy groups come that's where, in. That's where you come in. And that's where we right. come in and we reach out and we educate you on how to maintain that 700 now that you've got it. But see, there are individuals that are getting that education in some of the neighborhoods that I just previously right, mentioned right. and versus the other ones that aren't. And that goes into the other uh, category that mm -hmm. I, that is a part of my takeaways, which is the separate and unequal education, not mm -hmm. just in the school system, but just yeah. in everyday life, right. wh whether it's the importance of voting, whether it's how to go get a loan, how to buy these a house, how to, how to buy a car. They aren't. These are conversations that happen at home first. And they don't happen traditionally at home in a lot of black families because we're struggling to survive. Yeah. When you're in survival mode, you're not thinking about purchasing a home. You're thinking about how to keep the lights on. Yeah. And so when you don't have to think about how to keep the lights on, that anxiety goes away and it frees your mind to think about the future. Now I can think about a better credit score. Now I can sit down and take the time because it takes time. You know, whether it's over dinner conversation, now we can talk about that because now daddy ain't all uptight because he just lost his job, yeah. you know? So you can't have those kinds of conversations in a household when you're just trying to survive. Yeah. If you're out of survival mode, it does a whole lot for you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. psychologically, the whole nine. When you have wealth, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a couple points out here quickly to, to blow, blow, blow your mind because these are, important pieces to what we what these are things that we associate with wealth right education more advanced edu education higher education uh better you know better credit your know, finance financial literacy and these are things that are going to be important to what we do ultimately keep this in mind too that right now at least based on the last information that we have from the federal government for the past seven eight nine years every three years we look at this type of information about black wealth right now a black household where the head of the household has a college degree has less wealth than a white household where the head of the household is a high school dropout i've seen that. Right? I saw that mm -hmm. that is now now think about what i just said okay? that. right a right now a black household where the head of the household has a college degree has less wealth than a white household where the head of the household never finished high school at all. Okay. So these are going to be opportunities. Right. Now, how did that happen? Right, right. That mean that's that has a lot to do with access to opportunity. It, it has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with that, and it also has a lot to do with the fact that those households didn't have slavery in their history. Mm -hmm. Didn't have Jim Crow in the history. They were actually the beneficiaries of slavery they're the mm -hmm. beneficiaries of, the homestead act. Of, mm -hmm. of jim crow of, mm -hmm. of things like the homestead act mm -hmm. and I, I know you talk a lot about the, the gi bill mm -hmm. you talk about the jim crow new new deal mm -hmm. the you know i mean that that there's a book that some some of y'all may be familiar with called when affirmative action was white mm -hmm. white folks have had an ongoing affirmative action plan in this country since the country started right. yeah. and, it's, and i'm glad you mentioned edu education brother because the, I know there's, there are some there are some recommendations about education. What I expect black folks to do once we get reparations in California, I expect us to create our own schools, to create our own different ways of educating our people, to get our kids out of these racist schools with these racist teachers hurting our kids every single day, to homeschool our, our kids. I want to see free homeschooling. So if you're eligible for reparations in California, I want the state to pay for it. If you choose to homeschool your, your kids, I want the state to pay to homeschool your kids free. Mm -hmm. And I want us to have the autonomy to create our own way of educating our kids. Maybe we don't want a school that looks like the school that we send them to now. Maybe we want to do a different type of school. Maybe it's a community type school. What I want us to think creatively about reparations education wise. And there are some good recommendations also too, which is why I'm, I'm glad you brought up the point of education, brother. So I wanted to, I'm not gonna get it, as I read this, I'm not gonna get into it because we are at the last few minutes and I wanna get through some of this executive summary on the housing pieces. Uh, compensate individuals forcibly removed from their homes due to state action, yep. including but not limited to park construction, highways construction and urban renewal. 
prevent current banking and mortgage related discrimination, including but not limited to discriminatory actions as a result uh, of artificial intelligence and automated data analytics. There is a story behind all of this, you all. So as, as I'm reading this and you're like, what in the heck? Check the news. It's yep. all there. Repeal Article 34 of the California Constitution. Repeal or counteract the effects of crime-free housing policies that disproportionately limit Black residents' access to housing. Establish a state-subsidized mortgage system that guarantees low interest rates for qualified California Black mortgage applicants. Identify previous and eliminate current policies and practices that overwhelmingly contribute to the vast overrepresentation of African Americans among the unhoused population. Identify and eliminate policies with blatant anti-Black residency requirements or preferences, invalidate and deem unlawful any contract with anti-Black racial covenants. It's still in the books, y'all. Provide clean and secure public housing for vulnerable populations, including those persons who are formerly incarcerated in the foster care system and unhoused individuals. Provide development incentives for businesses that provide healthy foods, specifically grocery stores in predominantly black neighborhoods to address increasingly, prevent, uh, pr increasingly prevalent food swaps. There's so much more. You just go to the Secretary of State's website, download the um, preliminary recommendations for future deliberation. There are six pages of it. There's, there are more uh, links to the different breakouts of the report that you yep. can download, or you can download the entire report but you definitely need to do. I want to give you this lat these last few minutes to talk about the Freedmen's Bureau. Yes. Yeah, so oh, well, before you say that, I, yeah. I want to add something to something Chris said. He talked about creating, you know, black schools and um, um, programs specific to black kids and letting people homeschool. We also want to acknowledge that we are living in the United States of America, yeah. and some of those teachers that are in our classrooms now that are not teaching our children properly just simply need to go they got to go and so so go. sometimes it's not just about creating a black school but taking the schools that exist and making Both. them right absolutely because we want to make sure that we are we are united absolutely. states Those and are. we don't want to recreate i this is my opinion i don't want to recreate segregation but i no. want to make sure we are intentional right. about healing black people absolutely right we want it all we pay taxes for those public schools too. Those are our schools too. That means the teachers in there, they got to do right by us. Or like you said, they got to go. Mm -hmm. We want that. And we also want the power and the ability to do schooling in our own way. And also maybe homeschool our, our kids too. But Take wanna, two minutes and yeah, talk about the Freedmen's so, Bureau. Or if you go to the preliminary recommendations, the early early recommendations in the report, I think you can download the report, see the piece of the report. At, I think it's www.oag dot ca dot gov forward slash ab 3121 well dang that is the okay. place where you go and hit the <laughs> hit the re re reports tab in the some of the first recommendations they talk about creating something called the california american freedmen agency or what we call now CAFA, and that would be historic that would be the first agency government institution specifically for black folks who descend from u.s slavery in this country since the original freedmen's bureau and the task force and the commission is recommend that California create this agency to help folks find their ancestors, demonstrate that you are somebody who are who is, is a descendant of U.S. Yeah. slavery, pay for that for you, do that work for you, or an office of freedmen families, or uh, potentially a, a freedmen's bank again here in the state of California. I mean, this is this is one of the most exciting parts. That's of this, the yeah. cherry on the top right. because as this all started panning out, a lot of people were saying. I can't even find my people. I don't even know how. Where do I start? Right, right. And this, and this, and this agency would do that for you. It would pay for that for you, and it would do that work for you. So that way, you would just re receive something. Hopefully, saying, "Hey, you are eligible for reparations in in California, and here's what you're eligible for." That's what the vision of this agency is. This is exciting, you all. We we are out of time. And I, I just want to give a, a shout out to those of you that are watching online. Let me see here if I can go through real quick and say hi to Sharita, Miss Fran, Estelle, Deandra, Nikki. I see you all on here. Thank you. And all of y'all that did not say anything in the comments, we see that you're watching. You've been listening to 97.5 FM KDEE. Chris Lodgson, thank you, sir. It's good Pleasure. to see you likewise. in the flesh. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. <laughs> and Marcus D. Smith, Sacramento Brother. B. 
our uh, journalists. I just I get this picture of you with with wings on your feet, just delivering the <laughs> message. And so we are just excited to have you both in the trenches. I'm happy to be a part of this moment in time. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, if you are doing what you were created to do, I will see you at the top. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. <laughs> what was that? You want to steal these? Okay. Oh, yes. This is, do you want the, um, the press release too? Because it makes it all make sense. Okay. All right, y'all. We're going to sign out right here. And I'm going to say bye to the gentleman. Peace, love. There we go. There we go.